Um, well, first of all, thank you again. I really appreciate it. And thank you. I wanted to see if, just to begin with, if you recall the first time you acted, even just for fun, uh, what that might have involved. And then also, just as part two, um, what led to that first opportunity to do it professionally, which I, assume, I guess was for Harry Potter, but was, you know, what, how did that come about even? I'm just, I'm like trying to think back with the earliest time myself performing. I think I did a play called uh, The Prince and the Swallow. And it was a school play and I got to wear this little red bandana necktie and I had like, I had these like dark eyes as, as the swallow and I got to sing and I had to move around the stage like a bird and like, <laughs> But um, yeah, uh, that was my first. And then when I was at the same school as I did that performance, when the Harry Potter auditioners came came and said, you know, do you have any kids that between the age of nine and twelve, thirteen, that you would want to put forward to audition for Harry Potter? And my my drama teacher, you know, put a group of. 12 or 13 of us forward and just in our school gym we just kind of we did some drama exercises I guess and they took my photograph and they asked they got a phone call asking me to come to London three weeks later wow. um, and then I just went on this roller coaster of I ended up doing they said they knew they wanted me after two or three auditions and I did nine oh my God. because they needed to find they need it wasn't just about finding the right person for each character it was about making sure that the three of us looked right together and that we had the right chemistry and whatever else so it was a real journey and and uh, when I when they actually told me I had the part I couldn't really I couldn't really process it I couldn't really believe it because it had been such a long time you went something such a long time coming I just was almost like numb I'd kind of like numb myself out to the whole thing so um yeah, that was crazy. And when you were doing those auditions, did you reach the same conclusions that they did about who, you know, that you paired best with the same ones that they Um, yeah, I think so. When I auditioned with Rupert and Dan, something just kind of felt right. Um, so, yeah, I think I was on, I was, I was on my wavelength. But they found Dan very late in the process. I auditioned with other Harrys. So, yeah, they found Dan. And, and just one last thing about that. I mean, going in, did you appreciate the, I mean, the magnitude of the project? Had you read the book? Honestly, you... I'm still appreciating the magnitude. <laughs> like, every day, I'm still trying to get used to what my life is like now that this this thing happened. I mean, every day. That Honestly, there's a day that goes by that there isn't something about my day that's a little bit abnormal <laughs> or weird that I'm just like, wow, this thing really had some impact, huh? Um... So yeah, I mean it's been it's been unbelievable, really. I have to pinch myself sometimes, but um, yeah. It seems like one of the the really sort of positive things that might have come out of that experience was the opportunity to work with such a variety of directors and also basically every great older British actor that yeah. there is. No, it's funny. I mean, I, I say that there are positives and there are, there are minuses about my experience. The positives... Actually, let's start with the minuses first. Let's, okay, go, good, yeah. let's go bad and then good. So the bad, the bad is that, I mean, what most people, what most actors and actresses do behind like closed doors, kind of like slowly but surely figuring themselves out, mm. making mistakes, getting better, you know, all that stuff I did with the, with the world watching. Which was like it makes you it makes you very afraid of being bold, of of being brave, of really going for it, of putting yourself out there because you know, you know, suddenly I had this awareness, like age twelve or thirteen, I was like, Oh my god, the whole world is gonna see his performance and like it's a lot of pressure. So you're constantly fighting the fear factor. Um, but then, of course, the pluses are that now, honestly, every movie set I go on, I walk onto set with the confidence that there is nothing they can throw at me that's going to surprise me. I mean, I have done scenes with animals, with <laughs> owls, with bats, with cats, with special effects, with thespians, with in the freezing cold, in the pouring rain, boiling hot, you know. I've done press with every syndication, right. every country. I've done interviews with, like, people dressed up as cats. Cows, <laughs> I, 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 there's nothing. There's honestly nothing that's going to intimidate like, you. you yeah. know, and that's a nice feeling to walk on. You know, to walk on somewhere with, which is that, you know, surprise me. Surprise <laughs> me. Just try. Really? Go on. So. 
that feels good. So it's it's been good and bad. It's been good and bad. Just to sort of tie in with you know, in in, in Perks being a wallflower, that these are we're talking about certainly one character and really a few characters that um, are almost not noticed. Really. Yeah. For you, I wonder if it's sort of the opposite uh, issue that it's hard, uh, obviously, to, to go about your life without sort of standing out, even if you would like to. Um, is that something, is it sort of worth the, the, the rewards that have come with the success of Harry Potter and your career in general? Uh, is it worth the price that you've had to pay for, you know, losing your anonymity, basically? Um, I mean... It's re I mean, it's really interesting that you kind of understand that because I, I sometimes feel like it's difficult for people to relate to me until they spend like a day with me, <laughs> and and like until they walk around with me in public, and then they're like, oh, this affects you every day of your life, and I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. and it it's like, yeah, it it I have to be a lot more calculating because I'm because I'm a very private person and because I I, I, thought I actually really struggle with the attention I'm, I'm generally a pretty shy kind of a person so it it's like it's tough figuring out how to manage it but there are ways of managing it and you just have to be you have to be smart and I just try and surround myself for the biggest proportion of time that I can with people who make me feel normal mm -hmm. because constantly feeling abnormal is quite is quite difficult like having people people don't really understand but having people stare and point and take pictures even if it is in a positive framework it's quite it's isolating mm -hmm. there's no two ways about it you feel a little bit you know a little bit freakish so so knowing now what you know if you were to be able to go back and and potentially yeah. become a hairdresser or something, would would you still choose to pursue the path that you've pursued? I, I as a person I have a belief system which is that everything happens for a reason mm. and that I'm I'm like taking this journey because it's it was my journey and mm. this is where I was meant to be and I don't I don't really believe in, in like having having regrets. It's yeah. just not really in my mindset that, oh, if you could have done it differently, would you? It's like that doesn't even occur to me. I'm right. here and this is where I am, and <clears throat> I, you know, I'm just I'm living living in. Yeah, and you got one life. Yeah, right. And I think it seems you're 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 making the best of of it. Certainly, I just and you were saying to surround yourself with people. You have a, a nice friend here. I just met. Yeah, yeah. did you meet Amy? Yeah. Yeah, good chat with Amy. Yeah. <laughs> right. She's awesome. No, I yeah. have I I have really really great friends, and that's probably the only reason that I have any small degree of sanity, if <laughs> if I do, and uh, I just keep them around me as much as I can, because they yeah. Well, one one of the other, I would imagine, sort of great things that you probably weren't able to appreciate until after Harry Potter that that, that experience gave you is now you really do carry a lot of uh, clout in this industry. And so, from what I understand, this particular movie, Percy Being a Wildflower, would not be without you. Well, I mean, the movie has some difficult and pretty, like, pretty much taboo issues in it. Like, no one wants to make a movie that has, you know, they hear the word, the word you know, child sexual abuse and they're like oh we no <laughs> right. we are not going there like that's not for us right. like thank you very much but we're not interested and like uh, and so um when i read the script it felt like well of course they're gonna make of course someone's gonna want to make this movie and then my agent told me they're like we just don't no one really wants to right. like no one wants to it i'm like not with me and with logan and <laughs> no they're not in so i had to i flew myself to la and i sat down with Everyone with Disney, with Paramount, with all of everyone, and, I, and they were like, "What movie are you want to play?" And I was like, "I really want to make this movie, Pokes Being Wallflower." And Summit was, were the ones who um, who were like, "All right, we're in, we're gonna go for it." So uh, yeah, it was really nice for me to see that I could change the course of of things slightly. I mean, that's certainly one of the perks of yeah. having the Harry Potter. I was like, <laughs> the perks of the perks of being a <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And um, so that was awesome. And uh, you know, I think, I honestly think the world would be a better place if there were more people like Charlie. And, and that's so great that I've had a small part in in that. So And also proud. that, uh, yeah, I'm I mean, and, and, and the fact that there will be people, I, mean, probably have, I know there have already been people that read the book, that it changed their lives. There may very well For be sure. people that see this movie. For sure. Uh, I, I really think that. And uh, if I made one person feel a little bit less alone for a second, then it was all worth it. All worth it. For sure. So, 
with that, you know, you mentioned coming out here to talk about, you know, doing this project with the studios, and I imagine there was a lot of thought that probably went into what's the first starring role going to be after Potter, because in a way that's going to set the tone for, you know, the way your your career goes for the next chapter or whatever. And um, I mean, I, certainly I'm aware of my week with Marilyn. I enjoyed that. That was Thank great. Thank you very much. But uh, this was like a different. This was your movie, this one, and I just wonder what was there a lot of what were some of the considerations that go into you know what do you do first thing after Harry Potter? Um, yeah, I mean it's interesting. I mean it. I mean it's still a supporting role. I mean it's interesting in the book. You know Sam, the way Sam is built up as a character is very much through Sam, who is the protagonist's um, perspective. So. This was never going to be like a breakout role for me. It, it was. It was. All, I was always here to support, as a supporting thing. As a journalist, there's something really interesting, interesting to me the other day. They said, "Do you really take on, you know, supporting or small roles in movies because you don't think that you you're good enough, basically, to 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 do a movie on your own?" And I was like, That's a, "That is a really bizarre question yeah. to me because I. I mean, this is maybe just the way I pursue. I'm pursuing my career, which is that." I pick movies, not roles. Mm -hmm. And like Sam is a great role, but as a movie, right. it's such a great movie. And like I wanted to be a part of it. And with my week with Marilyn, I was like, this is going to be killer. Mm -hmm. Michelle Williams is amazing. Mm -hmm. Eddie Redmayne is great. Kenneth Branagh is awesome. Like I want to be, <laughs> even though it's a tiny role, right. like I want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And and so that it was just really strange to me. But um, yeah, I mean, coming out of Potter. I just, I was studying at Brown and I didn't really want to work and I, it was really just about waiting for something that just really spoke to me. And I had no, there was no strategy. There was no, like, if you had told me that the first movie I was going to do coming out of Harry Potter was an American high school movie, <laughs> I would have laughed at you. Right. I would have gone, yeah, no. It's about as far from your yeah. experience as... Yeah, no, I was like, that, <laughs> that's not what I want to do. I didn't think I was going to do high school movies, period. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, like, you know, do something. But then I read the script, and it totally blew me away. And that's, that's how it happens. There's, there's no, like... I'm going to play this person next. You just in this industry, you right. just can't do that. Right. You have to. Well, I think you have to pick. You have to pick the movie. And you have to pick the thing that comes along at the right moment, at the right time, with the right cast. And for me, that was Logan being cast as Charlie. That was Steve directing it, and it was that script. And done deal. I'm in. You know. Wow. So in terms of story <laughs> scale, every which way, it couldn't be more different than what you're coming off all these years of doing, right? This yeah. is a relatively tiny movie compared to that. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, it is, you know, I, when you stop and think, isn't it kind it of was, funny? It was hilarious for me. I, I was like, you can make a movie for, like, less than $100 million? <laughs> Are know. you kidding me? Like, the, the budget that we had for perks, I was like, that's like... <laughs> I couldn't even... And they were like, we're going to film it in six weeks. <laughs> I was like... You can make a movie in six weeks. We did when we did Harry Potter in like seven months. <laughs> this was like talking another language to me. I was it was it was just another world. And then of course doing the American accent and yeah. doing the American high school thing, which I have zero personal experience of. I turned up like a quivering, anxious, nervous wreck <laughs> about doing this movie. I was so nervous. I was like, I have no personal experience to draw on. I have no idea if I can do this American accent. Like, I I've never done a movie this small before. Like, I was really, you know, I was really nervous. I was like, what am I doing? Why did I agree to do this? <laughs> and then immediately, Steve just really, I don't know why, he really believes in me. And he's like a Charlie. He's like, Charlie is to Sam. He just totally, 100% believes in me. And he gave me the confidence and the faith in myself that I could pull it off. And, uh, and that was so awesome. And it just gave me permission to to do something different and show a different side of myself, which was just so liberating and uh, exciting, and uh, I'm just so I'm so proud to have been a part of it. And Logan's so great in it as Charlie's uh, heartbreaking, and Ezra's like the coolest, funniest guy ever. So it was great to learn from them, and I think it just took me another step closer to, you know, just maybe that little bit better. Last question, two part. Um, <laughs> this the, for, was it. Does it kind of uh, occur to you, just as a as a fun sort of amusing parallel, that again it's two males and a female classmate, 
<laughs> and then uh, that just and then the more <laughs> yeah. the more serious part is just uh, I, I heard you guys really did hit it off. I've heard about uh, octopus jam and and certain other things. Was that uh, can you enlighten us about that? Um, <laughs> well, we so yeah. I mean, <laughs> I have to I have to defend people have been like she's in another movie with two other but guys. But why is that a bad she's thing? Always in trios. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> but I mean, to be fair, I did Mike with Marilyn. Right. Nothing to do with trios. <laughs> I just did The Bling Ring, which right. is all about a group of girls. Um, I'm doing Noah, which is about a whole family. Right. And like, right. um, I did The End of the World. Nothing to do with a trio. So I've done maybe right. like four or five other movies now right. that don't have a trio, <laughs> but obviously Harry Potter's the one that really sticks out. Right. So immediately people draw that comparison. But just like, what I would say is like, Go and see this movie. Right. It's, it's nothing it be more like Harry right. Potter. Like it could not be more different right. from from Harry Potter. So that makes me laugh a bit. I'm like, you're in for a shock. Right. If you think you're going into anything, anything that has any resemblance. Right. Um, and then to answer your second question, uh, yeah, we had an awesome time. We turned the ground floor of the Crown Plaza into <laughs> like a hippie commune. I was deliriously exhausted by the end of this movie. I slept on average maybe like four hours a night because we just stayed up all night playing music and talking and just like just having a good time really. So uh, we had we had we had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was great. We had and a lot of fun. Thank you very much for this and congratulations. It was I really enjoyed it. So. Good, thank <laughs> you.